So we're thinking this morning about how do we grow. And Paul, in the letter to the Corinthians, has been kind of encouraging the church in Corinth to grow in their faith. He thinks that they've kind of been a bit immature, they haven't really been growing up very well, and he's kind of writing to address that situation. We've been looking at the whole letter and we're carrying on looking at it today. And as we'll look later on in the passage, he kind of wants the people in Corinth to grow in their faith. He's been talking about how that they've kind of not been living by the world, they kind of shouldn't be living by the world anymore, the world standards, the world's kind of reaching for status and power and money, but that through the power of God's Spirit in them, they've come to faith and they should be living lives full of the Spirit, living in step with God. So we're kind of thinking a bit about that at the moment. And in the passage we're going to read in a little bit, he talks about how they're infants still. They haven't yet grown up. And actually, they're not really reflecting living a life with God. They're kind of not imitating Jesus. They're not looking anything like him. So I've got some pictures of animals, okay? And I want you to see what they might grow into, okay? So if you're sort of seeing this, they've come up on here as well. So let's see our first picture. I'm a bit new at this. So our first picture, what will this grow into? What do we think? Any ideas down here? A flamingo, we've got a flamingo down here. What else do we think? A chicken, any advance on chicken out there? Ostrich? Let's see. Let, what did you think? A duck, right, let's see what it is. It's a peacock. Next one. What do you think this will turn into? What do you think? A mouse, maybe a mouse? Tapir. Tapir? Mole? We you going with mole as well. Any advances out there? A platypus? Nice one. You might be able to help me in a minute. Let's have a look. It's... So Colin, you should have known this. So this is from Australia. It's an echidna or something like that. You knew it was going to be that. I knew you knew that. Right, let's go to the next one. So what do you think that is going to turn into? Flamingo, maybe. Do you think flamingo? Swan, maybe. Hands up, flamingos in the audience. Congregation. Who, who went hands up, swan? Ostrich, we've got. Okay, let's see who is right. It's a flamingo. I thought it looked a bit like a swan. I kind of did that on purpose because it's kind of got that swan look, hasn't it? Right, <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? What do you think this will turn into? A panda. It's a bit more obvious, this one, isn't it? Let's, yeah, I think we're right. A giant panda. I think there's one more. What will that turn into? We've got ostrich. I can hear rumblings of ostrich. What do you guys think? Duck. Ostrich. Not quite. An emu. Oh, you were going to say emu. So it's just a kind of fun way of introducing us to this idea that actually sometimes it's quite difficult to see what the animal is going to turn into. And in the passage we're going to read, Paul's saying that same thing about the Corinthian Christians. He's saying the world would find it really difficult to see that you are followers of Jesus. You're arguing and jealous of each other, and you're not showing a life living full of the Spirit. So if you've got Bibles um, in front of you, grab one, and we're going to turn to the Bible passage to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, reading through from 1 to 9. Great. Made of milk, but great. So we've kind of got that image that Paul talks about. He talks about kind of the Corinthian church as being infants still. We'll look at that image. But he wants them to grow off milk and onto solid food. And then we've got the second image of seeds being planted in a field. Okay, so hold on to those two images. So the first image is this kind of idea of growing in faith. And as I said, Paul kind of said that they're spiritually immature, that they're not growing more and more like Jesus, that they're still on milk. He said when he first came to them and told them about Jesus, that they're baby Christians, so of course they were going to have spiritual milk to begin with. 
but he would expect as they grew in faith that they would move more onto solid foods, meaning that their faith would grow, that they wouldn't still be reflecting the world. So they were quarreling and jealous of each other, and they were kind of still in that stuck position of the world who valued status and power over other things, over godly wisdom. He said that they're still infants. They've not grown up in their faith. They're not imitating Christ. We'll come back to this, but let's just hold this question here. Are we imitating Christ? Are we living by the world or the spirit? Let's hold on to that as we move forward. Because the second image is of seeds being planted. I might need Paul to help me out with this next part. But if we were to plant a garden this morning here in church, right here, what do you think we would need? Soil. I heard soil. Bear with us. He moves a little quickly. <laughs> so we've got soil. Water was the next one. Fantastic. What else might we need? Seeds. Yeah, there's seeds. Yep. Yeah. Sun or light. Sun or Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine, we're using our imagination. What else might we need? Mud, yeah, that's a really good point. Got some there, yeah. A plant, a, pl a plant to actually grow, yeah, that comes from the seeds. What, what do we need to kind of, can we just pour soil on the ground here? Any green fingers uh, advice? We need a pot, yeah, a pot. Fantastic. Right, now, would you like to plant some seeds? So we've got some plastic over there that we can lay on the floor, some bin bags. I haven't got enough for us all, I'm afraid. If you, if you are out and you want to grow a plant, do come forward and you can, you can do a plant as well, if you're still sort of sitting down. Do you want to help? That's it. It, come around. So if I was to say that they were going to have a competition and they were going to see who could grow the best plants and seeds, any, any kind of, not that we bet in church, but any ideas of who might win this, this competition? Who's going to grow the best plant? Any idea, any, you, we've got two people here that think they're going to grow the best plants. Rachel thinks her skills are pretty up on it, yep. Yeah? I am not green fingered. So if you put a little bit of soil in your pots, and Rachel might need to help these two little ones here as well. Fantastic. I can garden all by myself. You can garden all by yourself. Amazing. Okay. See, the arguments that were happening in the church in Corinth centered around seeds, and not seeds that are of our garden, but seeds of spiritual growth, that idea of Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life, the saviour of the world, that Jesus died and was raised again to give life for everyone and freedom and forgiveness from sins, that the old way of life, the way of the world, was no longer needed, but they could follow Jesus to eternal life now and forever. That was the seed that Paul's talking about, and he was saying to them that that seed was planted. I came, I planted that seed. But it didn't matter that it was me that planted that seed. And Apollos is your leader and has carried on leading you. But Apollos isn't any better than me. I'm no better than Apollos. Who are we? We're no better. It doesn't matter who planted the seed, who watered it, because it is God that makes it grow. Now, it doesn't matter who of our friends here have watered and planted their seeds. What matters is that with time, the seeds should grow. Apparently, 14 days plus for some seeds to appear. It's parsley. So you've got some nice salad coming your way, those who've got kids up here. Um, but the idea is that when we, you take these home, guys, you can kind of think about, actually, this is representing our faith. We want to see our faith grow. We want it to grow and to bloom and bottom and make lots and lots of parsley, but of faith, of fruit of the Spirit.
Remember that. Are we imitating Jesus? Are we living by the Spirit or the world? You see, Paul wants his followers to really know, he wants the Corinthian church to know that the leaders are only servants of God, that it's God who gives leaders their task. God is the one in control. Paul says the leaders are the ones sharing and teaching about faith in God. But it's God that makes that seed of faith grow. He says the leaders are irrelevant compared to God. It's God that makes it grow. It's God who does it. Our trust should be in God, not in our leaders. The leaders are to be faithful to God's calling. You see, all of this Paul is saying, I don't want you to argue and quarrel about who's the best leader. Don't say, well, I was baptised by Paul, I'm better than you. Or I, was, um, I did a one-to-one with Claire this week, so that means I'm holy. Or Paul here, he was the one that confirmed me, brought me up, I've known him my whole life. This Paul, not Gospel Paul. Um, he's, he's a much better leader. It's not about comparing leaders because all of it is about God. We're following God's call on our lives. The passage um, ends with this phrase of Paul saying, you are God's field. What decisions are you needing to make this morning that kind of represents that knowledge of that you're God's field? That you might have, you might not have had the seeds of faith planted. This might be the first time you've heard about what Jesus has done for you and wants to do for you. That through faith in him, he wants to bring you to forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Maybe you need to let that seed be planted. Maybe we need that seed watered and to grow in our lives. You see, Paul ends saying that you're God's field. He wants the Corinthian church to grow. And actually, don't we want to grow in our faith? I don't know if you guys, have you heard of the parable of the sower? Yeah. So the parable of the sower was a story that Jesus told. And he was telling it to his disciples. And he said that there's various seeds being dropped on different bits of soil and the seed is like the message of God the good news of Jesus coming into the world to forgive sins and the soil the seeds landed on different soil but in the good soil in the soil that was open to growth it multiplied 30 50 100 times you see by having the seed planted and watered and allowing God to grow the faith in us we can produce good fruit fruit that shows that we're part of God's kingdom, we're walking in step with God's spirit. As Christians, we want to grow in faith, we want God's spirit to work in us, to change us. I'd hope we would anyway. See, do we bring love to the unlovable in our communities and in our families even? Do we bring peace in situations that need some peace? that are unrestful? Are we peacemakers in those situations? Do we bring joy, even in dark times? Are we people that are patient, even when we're driven to our wit's end by maybe our colleagues at work, or members of our family, or whoever it might be, our neighbour playing music really loud? It's right to kind of kind of, if there's air, if it's noise pollution, we want to deal with it. But do we do it in a loving, gentle, kind way that shows that we are part of God's kingdom? How are we representing God to the world around us? Because that's what Paul's saying to the Corinthian church. He says, you're not representing God. You're getting bogged down in the arguments and jealousy. We want you to grow. See, God's spirit as is at work in us, who have asked him to be part of our lives, Are we going to produce fruit? Are we going to behave and act and be an influence in the world that shows God's spirit at work? See, just as we'll wait for these parsley seeds to grow and keep us posted and how it works, just as we wait, we want to wait for God to be at work in us. Let him work in us. Let him grow our faith and be people that are recognisably different to the world around us because we're people of the spirit and not of the world. So how are you going to grow? What are you going to put in place to make sure you multiply and show all the fruit and the goodness of God's spirit in the world around us? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you 
that you have grown, our, that you grow our faith, that it's all down to you. Lord, help us to listen to you in our lives. Help us to let your spirit work in us, that we would be imitators of Jesus in the world, that people would see us as different because of you. Help us not to be jealous or argue or to show worldly traits, but to live in step with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for this. Do you want to take your seeds back to your seats?